Hi everyone and welcome to the final video on USA conflicts 1954 to 1975. Da, da, da. Oh no, it's exam time ladies and gentlemen. Don't worry, if you've done your work, you've done your revision, you'll be fine. The first 29 videos were looking at the course, what you actually need, the historical knowledge. The previous video, I was looking at the first three questions in the exam. In this video, ladies and gentlemen, we'll look at the final three questions in the exam. So, let's have a look. The final three questions on the exam paper are all about two different interpretations. Question 3b, four marks. Only spend about seven minutes on it. Question 3c, four marks. Only spend seven minutes. It's question 3d that I'll come to later. 20 marks, ladies and gentlemen. You need to leave at least 25 to 30 minutes to answer that question. So let's have a look at the three questions. Question 3b, those old historical questions, who, where, why, what, when, how. Question 3b, what is the main difference between two interpretations about a historical event? In other words, ladies and gentlemen, it's how. How are they different? Four marks. Well, they will give you two interpretations. You need to read both and then try to work out how they are different. One way of answering it, something like this. Interpretation one suggests this view. I know this because it says, and then you give a direct quote from the evidence. On the other hand, Interpretation two suggests this, a different view. The evidence which proves this is, and then you quote from interpretation two. So it's fairly straightforward. You should be looking to get four out of four here. If you follow that framework, you should be okay. In your answer, try and use words like the author or argues, claims, states, backs this up. If you're using phrases like that, you're probably going to get four out of four. So that's question 3b, fairly straightforward. Question 3c is all about why. Suggest one reason, notice just one reason. Suggest one reason why interpretations one and two give different views about an event. You may use two sources to help you explain. Four marks. 3b was how are they different? 3c is why are they different? So we're looking to get four marks. Well, here are some possible reasons why interpretations of history can be different. Remember, you only need to write about one of them. First, number one, the interpretation might give different weight to different sources, some concentrating more or less on different bits of evidence. There's one reason why they might be different. Two, the interpretation might be different because one of them might not be complete. It might only use partial extracts. Another reason, potentially, why there is a difference. And three, interpretations might be different because the author has different views, different focus, different emphasis. So there are three possible reasons why two interpretations can be different. You only need to show one of them. An answer might go something like this. An opening sentence. Interpretations one and two might be different because this author has a different focus. In interpretation one, the focus is this. This is supported by source B, which says 
this. On the other hand, the focus of interpretation too is this, a different focus. Again, there is support for this in source C, which says this. So you are comparing the two and trying to explain why they are different. Again, so long as you follow that framework, that pattern, it's reasonably straightforward, ladies and gentlemen. So that's question 3B and question 3C. Now, finally, we come to question 3D. 16 marks for history, four marks for spelling, punctuation and grammar. So making 20 marks in all. It's very important to your chances of doing well in the exam paper. Therefore, leave yourself a sufficient amount of time. I recommend 25 minutes minimum. Let's see how we can get a good high mark on this very important question. Well, what does the question ask? Here we have it. How far do you agree with interpretation one or interpre interpretation two about the historical events? Explain using both interpretations and your knowledge of historical context. Historical context means what was going on at that time. 16 marks. I suggest, again, because it's so important, you might want to use a framework. Notice there, ladies and gentlemen, a framework which is balanced. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, does it work? Ready, steady. Yes, superb. Balance, ladies and gentlemen, is very, very important in question 3D. What do we mean? Well, let's start. Let's say we're going to write about interpretation one. How far do you agree with interpretation one about the event? State, right at the start, state what the view of the interpretation is. You actually pick evidence from the interpretation which shows that. Step two, you agree with the interpretation. You agree with the view. Maybe use evidence from another source to back it up. Definitely try and include your own knowledge of historical context. Remember, events, things that were happening at the time. Use phrases like this. This view could be correct because at the time this was happening. So that's the one side. You are agreeing with the view of the interpretation. You backed it up with quotes from the interpretation, the source of evidence, your own knowledge and the historical context. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, balance. So half of your answer is now time to disagree with the view. How do you do that? Well, you look at the other interpretation, which will have a different view. So you've got to disagree using evidence from the other interpretation evidence from the other source. You can say phrases like, this challenges the view in interpretation one because, and then you explain. Also, back up this new view. Disagree with the previous interpretation. Disagree using again your knowledge and, and particularly historical context. The original view. The first view from interpretation one could be incorrect because at the time 
this was happening. Can you see what you've done there? Let's have a look. Go back to this. So, state the view of interpretation one, plus evidence from that interpretation. Back it up with evidence from the source, your own knowledge, your historical context. That's the first side of the balance, all in favor. But then you move against it, ladies and gentlemen. You disagree using interpretation two, evidence from a different source. You disagree using historical knowledge, historical context. So you have examined both sides of the argument. The view from interpretation one with evidence and support, the view from interpretation two with evidence and support. You have written about both sides of the argument. But let's go back to the question. How far do you agree? That's what I've asked you. Now you've laid out there both sides of the argument. But the most important thing you have to do is give your judgment. There it is. You have to say how far you agree. Give your judgment. Now, how do you do that? Well, use phrases like this. Overall, I mostly agree with interpretation one, or I partially agree with interpretation one, or I agree to some extent with interpretation one, because on the one side we have this, on the other hand, on the other side, we have this. But you must make your decision. It's no use, ladies and gentlemen, sitting on the fence. Yes, you've outlined both sides, but the question is very clear. How far do you agree? So you must address that in your answer. And there you have the exam finished. Hey. So that's the end of USA Conflict. 31 videos there to help you prepare for your exam. All that's left for me is to wish you all the best and good luck. Hopefully you'll do very, very well. Keep working hard. And I hope to see you and some of my other videos on some of the other modules that you might be doing as part of your GCSE history. Hope to see you again. Until then, all the best now. Take care. Good luck with your exam. See you soon. Bye now.